Wow, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I just felt that I want to really, really just be such a blessing unto many with regards to making, uh, you know, wise decisions in life. Our life is filled with decisions. You know, you wake up in the morning and uh, you you make a decision. Am I going to have decaffeinated coffee? Am I going to have hot tea? Uh, what kind of dress coat am I going to wear? And so our whole life is based on decisions. Isn't that true? <laughs> so... I want to look at practical ways in imparting the keys of wisdom to you. Now, you know, in life, uh, you can have uh, good decisions, and, and, and good decisions always, there are keys connected with good decisions. On my one side here, you can see there's a Bible, and there's some keys there. So I'm looking at it myself. And every decision that we make, is that decision going to add value to life? Is that decision going to subtract value from your life? And, you know, uh, the Bible says, when God blesses, he adds no trouble. And all my years up to this point, and especially, uh, uh, God bless you, Roscoe, and especially the day that I became born again, my decision-making started to change because I had to uh, get to the point in making decisions out of peace and not trying to make a decision when pressurized. When we make a decision in life, our decision should always bring the peace of God into our lives. Now, in life... Uh, when you want to conquer something, a wise decision is if you want to conquer something, you need to get to the point where you become so uh, dissatisfied with your satisfaction. Unless you become dissatisfied with your satisfaction, there's no way that you will be uh, energized in wanting to change a decision. You see, in my life, for instance, in my life, for instance, uh, what I refuse to confront has permission to hang around. And when I use the word confront, I am not referring to being negative and uh, being, uh, you know, uh, disrespectful towards anyone. There is absolutely... Now listen to this. Uh, Siri wants to interrupt us and I've never even asked for her to come in. I know this is of the Lord. So uh, here's the point I want to make. And that is... What we refuse to confront, we actually give permission to hang around us. Now, when I say confront, that doesn't mean you're, you're ugly and aggressive. No, no, no. Confront simply means you go towards that situation and you say, look, I'm not satisfied with this. Help me understand the motivation of your actions because it's not aligning with the vision or it's not aligning with promoting peace between you and I 
perhaps I am not understanding you. See, we need to uh, uh, learn the keys of wisdom, okay? You see, you have to understand in life, there are absolutely wrong decisions. In life, there are absolutely wrong decisions. What is a wrong uh, a decision that can lead you the wrong way? What is a wrong decision? A wrong decision is a decision that reduces your time with God. That's number one. Number two, a wrong decision is a decision that removes your peace. Number three, a wrong decision is a decision that removes your time, not just from God, not just removing your peace, but actually reduces your time with your family. That is right. There's divine order in the kingdom of God. It's God first, then it's your spice. I mean your spouse. Then it's your spouse. Then it's your children. And if those priorities are not in line, then um, your uh, decision that you make is going to cause the enemy to have a foothold in your environment, in your family circle. Now, uh, a wrong decision is a decision that will also reduce your commitment to God, to your family. A wrong decision is a decision that will bring trouble, strife. You know, when making a decision whilst your mind is full of strife, that's, that's going to lead you to and influence you to make a wrong decision. Decisions are very important in life. And we've got to uh, learn that when we make decisions, we need the keys of God to make a good, sound decision. Now, let me just go here, for instance, for a minute to like champions, champions in life. They make decisions that uh, will, uh, uh, how can I put it, create a desired future. Think about that. A temporary decision will only have short term results. But a decision that will add value to your future, spiritually, emotionally, physically, yes, and in the natural. Any decision that will cause you to add value towards your future is a decision that will motivate you to start changing some things around, okay? You see, uh, there are decisions in life that is only based upon what an individual can get out. God's decision for our lives, God's decision for our lives is a decision where other people can benefit. You never find that one person by themselves can be a far greater impact uh, success. God created us to be connected with people. It is just like that. You know, in Genesis, uh, in Genesis, it's very uh, clear uh, that the Bible says that it's no good for man to be alone. Even nations, nations should not be alone because all nations throughout the world, 
The one nation might be rich in minerals, the other nation might be rich in uh, certain uh, uh, ways that they produce goods. Another nation may be rich in, uh, let's say, oil, energy. Another nation may be rich in uh, uh, their skill. And uh, we all need one another. Okay? Now, a good decision when it comes to money. Are you ready? <laughs> a good decision when it comes to money is to understand money is merely a reward for solving problems. Never allow money to steward you. If you allow money to steward you, you are actually moving into the zone of idleness towards God. Remember, Jesus made a statement. He says, uh, you cannot serve both God and money. If money is your master, you cannot have God as your master as well because the two will be in conflict. When God is your master, then you make decisions that will please God. When you make a good decision, please remember, when you make a good decision, a good decision is always accomplished far better with effective warfare. Have some uh, people, intercessors, uh, ask them to pray with you about that decision which you're about to make. It's very important to have intercessors that will pray with you. Now, when you make a decision, if your decision is motivated by your feelings, then your feelings are going to be hurt. H-U-R-T. I'm not saying H-E-A-R-D for Delta, hurt. No, hurt. When you make decisions out of emotions, what happens when your emotions changes? Then that means your decision is also going to change. So in, in life, a, a, a decision that, you know, whenever you need to make a decision, most decisions will come out of, um, let's say, facing trouble. Those are deeper decisions. Shallow decisions. Do you want decaffeinated coffee or caffeinated? Shallow decision. But it may not be shallow when decaffeinated coffee pushes up your blood pressure and you're not supposed to drink the stuff. I'm talking about shallow decisions, like should I use this kind of toothpaste to brush my teeth, or should I color uh, my hair, uh, should I paint the wall green or white or, or black or whatever. Those are shallow decisions. It might be deep to you in your preference, but there is no conviction in the Bible that says you must have a wall that's black or white or green or yellow. It's preference. It's based on preference. And, and those things that are based on preference, don't let that unnerve your life. See? Now, when you make a decision, Avoid making a decision when you are stressed out. I'm going to bring this up on your screen again. If you make a decision out of stress, it will lead you in the wrong way. The best time to make a decision is when your mind is at peace. Stress simply tells you something is wrong. If you make a decision when you've got a physical headache, then what is motivating that decision? Your headache, right? 
The reason people or most people get a headache, and I'm not referring to a situation that's causing you a headache. It's a figure of speech. It's causing you trouble. If you've got constantly a headache when you wake up in the mornings, you need to pay attention because some decisions are needed. Perhaps you go to bed too late. Perhaps your focus when on the computer, you're wearing the wrong a strength of glasses and the, the glare or the focus on the computer could cause a headache. You may have to look at other arenas in your life when you have a headache. Maybe something is out of joint. Now you have pain. When you go through pain, it simply tells you something is not right. But if you make a decisions out of pain without examining the facts, without going through what is causing this pain, you can miss a boat. I'm going to give you a little example here. Imagine <clears throat> uh, God giving Peter the apostle a boat to say, there you are, I'm blessing you with a boat. Well, Peter simply uh, takes the boat. So, well, praise God, I'm so blessed. Look, God has given me and blessed me with a boat. He goes to fish. And he's now fishing. And he's getting so frustrated and so irritable. He's just not getting anywhere with the fishing. So he says, God, you blessed me with the boat, but this boat is one bundle of frustration. God says, I've given you an opportunity in blessing you with the boat, but you've never sought me for a strategy. You decided to go your own way, which is the wrong way. I never gave you a boat for fishing. I gave you a boat to bring the people from across the island to my meetings, church, or gatherings. And that's the purpose I gave you the boat. You see the fine, defining line. You have to discern in life why am I in a situation that I am in? I'm excited, but two months, three months later, God bless you, Sharon, two months, three, month, uh, three months later, that uh, excitement wears half. Now the real rubber meets the road. And it's like, I'm not so enthusiastic about this anymore. Why? What has gone wrong? Simply, if we do not include, and I'm going to bring that picture up on your screen again. If we do not include God, God's wisdom, then decisions are only temporarily. But when you make a decision based upon the word of God, then, then you can expect a lasting effect. But if you make a decision just because you one bundle of frustration and you're disappointed and you just, you know, all irritable, that's not a time to make a decision. Another time not to make a decision that can lead you the wrong way is to make a decision when you're double-minded. When you're double-minded, and you're indecisive. The Bible says in James chapter 1, ask when you lack wisdom. But a double-minded man should not think he will receive anything. And then the Bible connects a double-minded man with the waves in the sea. 
blown and tossed about. Same thing, boom, 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 there goes the wave. And then another one, then another one, then another one. It is just one big bundle of frustration. God bless you, Nehemiah. When you make a decision in the council of many, victory is made sure in the council of many. When you want to make a wise decision that will not lead you in a wrong way, then get counsel. The Bible says, in the counsel of many, victory is made sure. Now, avoid discussing your problems with someone incapable of solving it. If you only discuss your problems with those that will criticize it, break it down, and will just, you know, uh, pound you with, well, it's your fault, you need to, you need to, blah, blah, blah. Listen, you, when you discuss your problem with somebody, you want to know that they respect you, that they have your interest at heart, and that they will not just give you input off the cuff, like we would say, off, you know, just, well, maybe da da da. No. Wise counsel, wise input is necessary to make wise decisions. Okay. Now, let's look at struggle. Struggle. When you struggle in life with something, it doesn't mean you must just change. That struggle means that you simply have not been overcome and that you still, you still have a bone in the fight. <laughs> when you are struggling with something, it does not mean that it is necessarily wrong. Because a struggle is not a sign of defeat. Struggle is not a sign that you've missed the mark. Look at Jacob. And Jacob kept struggling with God for a blessing. He manipulated people. He was in a fight, all right. He was in a struggle. He lost his own personal identity because he sold uh, 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 Esau's, or shall I say he bought Esau's, uh, identity for a plate of lentils. So he actually walked with someone else's identity on his life, trying to be who he was not. That's a real struggle. Until you discover the real you in you, how will you live out the real you? And you can only discover that when you truly give your love to the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm just going to take another six minutes or so. So uh, let's just get back here. And that is, we need to make wise decisions in life. Okay. Uh, if you want to make a well-informed decision when it comes to people or it comes to uh, staff in your business or it comes to having to employ somebody or having to connect with someone else. One of the key uh, things here, those who do not respect, those who do not respect your assignment in life, if they do not respect your assignment in life, they will not add value to you. And somebody who does not respect your God-ordained assignment in your life, they don't necessarily qualify to have you share your intimate thoughts with them. 
they might turn on you. They may, they may discredit you with somebody else, go and tell somebody else you're uh, breaking the trust that you've entrusted them with. Qualify those that you want to be part of your dream, your vision. If they can respect you as a person, they can respect your values, and they can respect the God that you serve, then you are on a good track, okay? Now, before I begin to close, how many minutes are there? Yes, yeah, say maybe in four minutes or so, okay? Uh, what you see in life and how you look at life will basically determine your desire. This might be a little deep. You see, the... Uh, what you look at longest will begin to talk to you, right? Somebody says to me, how do I discover my gift in life? Well, let's say I've got five ladies for interview, and there are five typewriters. And these five ladies... They're not sure what they should be doing in life, but they all five are applying for this particular job called a secretary. The one who is drawn out towards administration, wanting to type, that's their passion, they feel good about it. That's a clue and a sign to make a good decision in which direction you need to go in life. Very important. You see, the atmosphere you permit in your mind will determine the product you produce in life. Very important. It's, it's very simplistic, actually. Uh, when you look at bananas, or you look at oranges, or any fruit, but certain fruit needs to be in certain atmospheres in order to produce a healthy harvest. And likewise with you. You see, if God has called you to be a fisherman, then you need to go where the fish is. If God has called you to have a passion for stray animals, then you need to make yourself known in that area. Nobody can grow by themselves successfully in life. We all need people in our lives. Jesus came as God's only begotten Son. But He appointed 12 others to help Him. Then the 12 became 72. The 72 became 120 in Acts chapter 1. And then the 120 became 3,000 in Acts chapter 2. And then they grew to 5,000. The point I am making is this. Whether we like it, whether we don't like it, our life is connected or our success in life is connected to people. Amen? Now, before I close, all right, um, let me just see here. Um, when it comes to God, God will never advance you towards your next assignment unless you've obeyed the last instruction God gave you. Okay? Remember that God does not owe us anything. God merely rewards us for obedience. 
May the Lord bless you. And may the Lord keep you. And I want to just bring this up as I'm closing the program. Let me just bring that up on your screen again. Why make decisions if it's going to lead you on a wrong way? You know just as well as I do that when you program a GPS and you put in a wrong address, it's going to take you on the wrong way to the wrong destination. Make the right decisions and the ultimate highest reward of decision making is to have God included in your decision. Amen. You don't want to go a wrong way. Remember, Jesus says, I am the only way. You don't want to go a wrong way. Include God in your decision. Uh, include God in your decision making. Include God in your inward discussions. Include God. See, some people make a mistake. They will uh, develop a design uh, if it's for a product or they will uh, simply, uh, you know, uh, just go ahead and, well, God is with me. Of course God is with you if you've confessed Jesus as your Lord and Savior. But God is not obligated to bless something that he was never included in from the get-go. See, many plans in a man's heart is his own, but to the Lord belongs the answer. I trust this helps you and added some value to you. Help me, let's spread all these messages that I'm prompted to release. I said to the Lord, the day I get to heaven, I want to be empty. I want to have a media revival and help me to spread a media revival. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you until next time. Remember, Jesus is still Lord. Bye now.